Hey everyone, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage View Lab, and today we're taking a look at the Intel P5316 Enterprise SSD. This is an NVMe SSD that uses Intel's 144 layer QLC NAND technology to offer a quite a bit of capacity. This guy that I'm taking a look at uh, is 30.72 terabytes. We just reviewed this, you can check it out on the website. The drive also comes in a 15.36 uh, terabyte uh, capacity as well. We've got a bunch of the 30 terabyte drives and that's because we're using them in addition to the review in a series of other projects including a uh, data logger for autonomous vehicles and you might think well QLC guys you've been telling me for years that uh, that writing to QLC is difficult and the performance is not great and yes that's still partially true but there's a new wrinkle, well not necessarily new, but a wrinkle in how we handle QLC drives, especially in the enterprise. We've been working with Intel a lot on this to make sure that our test plan and methodology is appropriate for these drives. And we'll get to some of that here in a, in a little bit when we look at the performance numbers. But as you look through the spec sheet of the P5316, you'll see that Intel is very specific about what you get out of this. And that includes performance with sequential and random and block sizes and uh, that also impacts the endurance. Now if you're nice and gentle on these drives, the, the 30 terabyte drive is a endurance spec of over 100 petabytes written. If you're less gentle, that number is going to be about a, a fifth. So you have to understand workloads here. So back when I'm talking to you about data logging uh, for autonomous vehicles, we're using four of these drives in a little cartridge and they're taking only writes but the writes are sequential and they're large block so anything larger than 64k is going to be especially if it's divisible by 64k is going to work out really well for these drives to give you a fantastic capacity point but also a reasonable performance point without having to use fancy cache or anything else in front that said, there are other more mainstream enterprise applications for QLC. So if we took a bunch of these, even the eight that we have, but filled up a server with more, we're seeing companies like Vast Data, who's taking advantage of QLC as a hard drive replacement, a true hard drive replacement. At 30 terabytes a piece, 30.72 if you want to go off the spec sheet, you can get amazing density in a 2U server, and all you have to do is give a little bit of intelligence in front of these drives, normally with uh, Intel Optane SSDs as a cache or tier, as in the vast case. Uh, you could do it other ways too. PlyOps, for instance, uses a, uh, an edge card with some DRAM on it to do the similar sort of work. But the point being that the workload or the software involved just needs to write to these drives in a very specific way so that they, uh, that they can take advantage of the full performance profile without causing any, any write cliff. Again, as we'll see as we look into the numbers, you can still write 4K, 8K, 16K, whatever blocks you want to this drive, but you will pay a performance price. And in fact, as we look at the spec sheet, we'll see that Intel does a very good job of specifying what you can expect from a, uh, from a, a read and write performance perspective based on block size. So what does that mean? It means at a high level, Intel's quoting 7,000 megabytes a second for sequential 100% reads. So that's gonna be your best case number on the right side, about 3,600 megabytes per second. But when you start digging in a little bit deeper, when we look at things like random write at a 64K block, Intel's quoting 510 megabytes per second, and then uh, random read, again, 4K block, 800,000 IOPS. Uh, this is coming out of a 25 watt drive. We're using the U.2 form factor, uh, but Intel does offer this in a ruler capacity or a ruler form factor as well with the same 15 and, and 30 terabyte class capacities. So we mentioned the, uh, the endurance spec a little bit. It's about 23 petabytes written at 64K random, uh, 105 more or less petabytes written at uh, 64K uh, sequential. Now these are lifetime write ratings. So that's what the spec sheet says, but what we wanted to find out for perspective is what do these 30 terabyte drives do when compared against the P5510, which is their main TLC workhorse. Now we've seen this drive in all sorts of applications. It's a mainstream uh, enterprise drive for mixed workloads that will be the uh, predominant uh, drive sold if you're just running a single flat tier 
in a server or storage server or storage appliance, whatever. Uh, but because the 5316 has such a good read profile, in a lot of ways, it's going to have similar behavior to the 5510. Again, we'll show you those differences here in a second. And this isn't a competition to see which is better. In aggregate, the 5510 is going to provide a better performance profile. That's a given. That's just the physics of what we're dealing with here. But at 30 terabytes in these more affordable QLC NAND, this is still going to be a really interesting drive. Now let's take a look at what we did see with some of these performance numbers. And again, we're just looking at this against the 5510 because really the uh, enterprise flash space when it comes to QLC, Intel has a dramatic lead over everybody else. There's not anything in the market that's even comparable with what they're doing with these uh, 5316 SSDs. So taking a look at our performance charts, starting with random read 4K, the 5316 saw uh, 917,000 IOPS, which is uh, not so bad for a QLC drive especially, and the 5510 peaked out at about a million and a half IOPS. So clearly on this workload, random read 4K, the 5510 has a big advantage. Now when we go to random write 4K, this is uh, where we see a bit of a problem with the 5316. So before I was talking about how it wants to be written to in larger blocks, it's definitely the case. This is really what's called um, the indirection unit. So this is uh, a 64K indirection unit drive, the 5316. And that's why when we hit it with that random write 4K, it really struggles while it will take a 4K or 8K or 16K write, anything less than 64, it really just doesn't want to be interacted with in that way. So that's one of the challenges that, uh, that needs to be accounted for, especially if you're using these drives as a, as a flat single tier. Software just needs to be aware of, uh, of what's going on. But when we look at something like the, the VAST or PlyOp solution that are, that are using these drives, they've worked that out in their intelligence and their software to coalesce the writes or do write shaping to make sure that the, uh, the 5316 gets written to in a way that, uh, that it appreciates and, and makes it feel good. While we look at uh, random read 64K, now this is really more the sweet spot for how to interact with the 5316, and it really bears out, especially on the read where QLC has a, a, a really nice performance profile. So we saw 5.3 gigabytes a second out of the 5316, edging out the 5510 that was at 4.8. So again, the right use case, the right way to leverage the drive, and you get some really impressive performance when it comes to read. On the right, you know, you're, we're just going to take a hit with a drive of this kind, but we do see uh, uh, 522 megabytes per second on the 5316, which is right where it's supposed to be. Um, and as you can see too, as if we go back to the 4K number and think about that for a minute, this is about six or seven times that in terms of overall performance. So it's worth the effort to make sure that these drives are interacted with uh, properly. Uh, when we take a look at sequential read 64K, the 5316 uh, was able to hit 112,000 IOPS um, at 566 microseconds, which is pretty good. Uh, and actually a little bit faster than the 5510 in, uh, in, in all. So another good showing for the 5316, and then on sequential write 64K, uh, about 13,000 IOPS at uh, just under 5,000 microseconds. Uh, but again, un under these write conditions, we see the 5510 uh, doing what it does and, and being a really good uh, primary workload drive. So as we come back and, and think about what the capabilities are of this particular drive, as long as you know what you're doing, it really is a solid drive. And when we start thinking about density, about cost per terabyte, about all the capabilities, especially for read heavy workloads where these can deliver really nicely, they're really setting the tone to be the primary data tier for which uh, the SSDs can be leveraged. The uh, Intel leadership in NAND when it comes to QLC is remarkable. 
the performance is really strong on these drives. And as we start to look at what where they can be, if you had asked me a year or two ago if QLC drives could be used for data logging and autonomous vehicles, I would have probably laughed because the performance up to that point wasn't as strong. But the software's caught up. Intel's done a great job in this latest iteration with these drives. And uh, we're very impressed with them and have a number of projects lined up for these guys. So you'll see much more uh, on the site coming out of these uh, 5316s. So stay tuned for that. And until then, thanks for tuning in.